Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... Today we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. Most all the pieces of our worship this morning is point to Jesus as the Good Shepherd. So our so our Good Shepherd Sunday is not a commemoration of something that happened many years ago and done. Rather, it is an ongoing thing. Jesus was, is now, and will be in the future our Good Shepherd. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned, you, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. 
Our first reading is from Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is written from 1 Peter chapter 2. This is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when, we, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you, it, you, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The holy epistle, or the gospel reading comes from chapter John chapter 10, starting at the first verse. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone hears, enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ, O Lord. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from John 10, verses 1 to 10. In the United States, we have certain days of the year marked as holidays, such as Fourth of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter, each commemorating an event of significance from the past. Today, we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. Most all the pieces of our worship this morning is point to Jesus as the Good Shepherd. So our, so our Good Shepherd Sunday is not a commemoration of something that happened many years ago and done. Rather, it is an ongoing thing. Jesus was, is now, and will be in the future our Good Shepherd. Or should I say, like King David in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. The gospel message from John shows us Jesus' use of picture language. Our gospel passage is inseparably associated with the entire ninth chapter of John. To pass by this relation would skip over important and relevant information. The ninth chapter tells how Jesus one day miraculously restored the sight to a man who had been blind from birth. The fact that he performed the miracle on the Sabbath day caused the Jewish religious leaders to overlook the, the miracle entirely. Furthermore, they challenged Jesus and accused him of being a false teacher while declaring themselves to be the true teachers, the followers of Moses. It was in response to this arrogance and ignorance that Jesus spoke the words of our text. If there is such a thing as justified anger, then we could say that Jesus was angry. He chose to respond with a parable or allegory. It has in it all sorts of beautiful picture language. The Lord Jesus was a master in the use of picture language. We must bear in mind that this picture has been drawn for us in the context and in the language of Palestine. Keeping sheep is not a familiar experience for most of us in the United States in the 21st century. Sheep, pens, gates, shepherds, thieves climbing over some other way would all be familiar to Jews. The sheep pen consisted of four high walls surmounted by sharp objects along the top so as to keep out the thief and the robber who might climb up some other way. In one of, the, one of the walls, there was a space a little wider than a man's body. The shepherd stood in that gap facing outward. As the sheep approached to enter the pen, the shepherd, when he was satisfied that all was well, turned his body sideways so the sheep could move past him into the pen. He literally became the gate. When Jesus here uses the expression gate, he is refer referring to more than a proper ordination or calling. The Jewish teachers, generally speaking, were not deficient in this aspect. Later, the Lord interprets the gate to mean himself. The thought is simply that the touchstone, or should I say the cornerstone of every true minister is Christ. The true shepherd of souls is that man who enters the ministry with a single eye to Christ, desiring to glorify Christ, doing all in the strength of Christ, preaching Christ's doctrine, walking in Christ's steps, and laboring to bring men and women to Christ. We are prone to think that the age in which we live is the most complex age the world has ever known. We must ask ourselves whether there was ever a time when Christians had to exercise more care about false teachers than in the 21st century? Good question. False teachers in Jesus' day and false teachers now. Today the great cry is for practical and revelant, revelant religion. Make it make sense for me, pastor. 
Make it something I can use in my day-to-day -day life. Some ministers, in attempting to respond to that cry, have often unknowingly dethroned Christ and elevated the social gospel, economic concerns, and sacred science to a position totally unwarranted. The latest phenomenon is that electronic church. It swings back and forth between good Christian-centered preaching to religious extravaganza. Very often it takes a discerning Christian to mark the difference. The bottom line is, however, the false teacher is the dry rot of the church. We must stay on our guard against false teaching that creeps in ever so slowly. When Jesus said, He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, Jesus, but climbs in another way, he is speaking about false teachers, those who bring another message not supported and verified by God's holy word, the Bible. Verse 6, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Jesus draws a picture for us of himself. He takes his word brush and with one sweep gives us an utterance of gold that ought to be dear to the heart of every Christian. Verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Find pasture? Sure we will. I don't know how it is with you, but when I walk into a huge church with very high ceilings and beautiful sculptures and fancy altar adorned with satin and gold, I feel so small. When I'm in a place like that, I sense God's presence and God's holiness. When we sense His holiness and perfection, He becomes unapproachable. When we sense and recognize our own guilt, both by commission and omission, we become afraid of Him. The great question of life for every person is, how do I approach God and draw near to Him? How can I get around or over or through this barrier or wall of sin that separates me from God? The only one that can provide answers to those questions is God Himself. He did just that through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus says, uh, and are we now, and, and we are now kind of paraphrasing the words of the text. I am the door through which you can pass and get on the other side of the wall and very close to God. There is no other way, no matter what men say. Every single sheep must enter through me if he would join God's flock. Every teacher who wishes to be a shepherd over God's flock must enter this office looking at me. The cost at which Jesus provided the passageway through the barrier or the wall is something beyond our comprehension. He didn't do it with gold or silver. He did it by giving himself in death on Calvary's cross. When we pass through that door, knowing and believing what He did, we leave our sins behind, forgiven by Christ, and free to go directly to God without fear. Let us accept the invitation extended by Christ and not, like so many, stand paralyzed in sin merely looking at the door. The door is free and open. When we enter by the door, we will be saved and we can Come in and go out. Come in and go out is a Hebraism that indicates a sense of feeling at home, being of, at liter liberty. When we want to convey a sense of freedom, we often say, I can come and go as I please. In other words, if you do enter the fold through Christ, the door, Contrary to popular opinion, you, you will not be losing anything except your sins. Jesus isn't inviting you merely to a different existence. He wants you to have a full life in every sense of the word. 
He said it beautifully in these words. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. May God, through his Holy Spirit, grant that we accept his gracious invitation and enter through Christ the door into eternal life. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. I'm Rev. Scott Seiler, the president of the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and one of the preachers on this program. Main Street Living has been on the air since January 6, 2002, thanks to God directing and blessing this program. For these many years, it has been our mission to help you to know and trust the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is free to us, but it costs Jesus his very life. Sometimes we use the word grace as an acronym to express this good news. G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace, willingly given by our triune God because he loves you so much. Today you have heard good news like this on our program. Thank you for tuning in today to Main Street Living. We ask that you pray for God's continued blessing upon this program and please consider giving a gift to support this ministry and keep it on the air so that many others may know God's saving grace for them. You may send your gift to this address, Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Tune in again next week to Main Street Living. And until then, remember that God loves you so very much and that His grace God's riches at Christ's expense is something you can count on every day of your life.